Before I start this episode of our Grow It campaign, I want to say a quick thank you to the episode sponsors. They are Wealthify and Fidelity. I'm going to say a quick bit about each proposition, so make sure you listen to them because later in the series when I talk about the different propositions out there, they'll be useful to refer back to. Do remember that with investing, your capital is at risk, so the value of your investments can go down as well as up, which means you may get back less than you invest. That is relevant to each of the propositions I'm going to talk about. First up, Wealthify is a multi-award winning online and app-based investment service founded in 2016 and backed by Aviva with a simple mission to make investing accessible to everyone. You can invest from as little as one pound, 50 pound for pensions. Wealthify has a simple yet competitive annual management fee, investment costs also apply and offers a number of investment products, including a stocks and shares ISA, a general investment account, a personal pension and a junior ISA. Within each of those, you can invest in a range of managed portfolios with varying risk profiles and even ethical portfolios. For more information about Wealthify, including how to take advantage of our £100 cashback offer, please visit wealthify.com forward slash MTTM. New customers only. Offer ends on the 28th of April 2023. T's and C's apply. Now, Wealthify does not offer advice. If you're not sure whether investing is right for you, then please speak to a financial advisor. Wealthify is authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Finally, I'd like to say thank you to our Grow It series sponsor, Fidelity International. Whether you're just starting out or an experienced investor, Fidelity offers a wide range of investment options with plenty of information, tools and guidance to help you make more of your money and achieve your financial goals. For more information about Fidelity, please visit fidelity.co.uk forward slash money to the masses. Before I start episode six of the Grow It series, Don't forget, if you find this useful, then please make sure you hit that like button and leave a comment below this video and I will answer any questions that you have or apply to your comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because this series, there are 10 videos. You can make sure that you get the subsequent videos. And also, if you're listening to this as a podcast, please make sure you leave a review if you've enjoyed it. This is the sixth episode of the Grow It series, and the series aims to introduce you to investing and growing your wealth. Now, if you've watched the first five episodes, you should understand the benefits of investing, as well as understand the investment risks, potential returns, and taxation. You should also have insights into when you should use a financial advisor to recommend and manage your investments, And when you don't need to, you'll also understand the benefit of using a tax wrapper, such as a pension or an ISA, to protect any profits or income that your investments generate from taxation. If you are going to grow your wealth, then you want to keep as much of it as possible. So in this video, I am going to explore how to build an investment portfolio. Now, if you remember, in the last episode, I described different investment products as boxes with their own rules around accessibility and taxation. The three main box types that I discussed were stocks and shares, ISAs, a pension and a general investment account. Generally speaking, the first two are the tax wrappers through which most people will grow their wealth. Now, when you choose assets to invest in, they go inside these boxes. And generally speaking, each box can contain the same investments if you so choose. But that does not have to be the case, especially if each box has different investment objectives and timeframes. As I mentioned in episode four of this series, if your finances are in order and are pretty straightforward, you have money set aside for emergencies. If you are employed, then you are contributing to your company pension scheme and you have spare money to invest in a time frame of at least five years. Then there are online services out there that not only recommend a diversified portfolio for you, but will also manage it at a fraction of the cost of seeking financial advice. Now, these services are often referred to as robo-advisors. Now, I don't really like the term robo-advisors, but it was coined by the mainstream media, and it seems to have stuck. Now, in the past, investing was the preserve of the wealthy, and if you had wanted to invest, you would usually have had to see a financial advisor in person who would then recommend an investment for you. Now, the charges 
for this service were expensive and your choices were relatively limited compared to today when you're talking about investments. But the advent of technology, changes in regulation and increased competition have not only driven down the cost of investing, but also democratised it and made it accessible to the masses. If you were to go back just over a decade, it was suggested that you needed at least £50,000 as a lump sum before you would be taken seriously if you wanted to invest. Now, not only can you invest from as little as £1, but you can even automatically invest the spare change from any car transaction you make. So in other words, you could go and buy a cup of coffee and the change rounded up to the nearest pound can automatically be set aside and invested for you. Now, the point I'm illustrating is that it's never been easier to start investing. For those who do not need to or want to seek full financial advice, robo advisors offer a good solution. Now, some offer execution only services, which means that they do not recommend a portfolio that will suit your risk profile. You simply pick one that you want. However, many services do actually carry out basic fact finding exercises, assess your attitude to risk, and then recommend a portfolio for you and manage it. So everything is taken care of. All you need to do is put your money in as a lump sum and or a regular amount over time. Now, popular robo advice services include Wealthify, Nutmeg, and Money Farm, to give a few examples. And there is a link in the notes of this episode that takes you to our best buy list on the Money to the Masses website, which shows you all of those services. We give them ratings, but you can also go through via links on that table to read full reviews of each proposition. And if you want to, pick one that suits. Now, robo-advice propositions will typically provide a range of ready-made portfolios with risk levels that range from low risk to high risk. Now, low risk portfolios will hold a greater proportion of bonds and less equities, while the highest risk portfolios will almost exclusively be exposed to the stock market. How they invest in different asset classes is usually via funds rather than investing directly in shares or bonds. Now, in the next episode, I talk about the different types of funds. But ultimately, if you plan to use a robo advice proposition to invest, then the asset allocation and fund selection is taken care of for you. So you don't have to worry about it. The benefit of a fund is that, for example, if you wanted to gain exposure to UK equities, You could choose a UK equity fund so you don't have to pick the individual companies out there whose shares you would like to hold. And a fund will instead invest in a wide range of UK companies with only a small percentage of the fund's assets being exposed to the fortunes of any one company. Then in turn, that fund will only likely form a small part of a wider portfolio that is investing in different types of assets. So lots of different types of assets and lots of different types of fund, which further diversifies how your money is invested. While each robo-advice service is slightly different, typically they will manage the investment portfolio, altering the asset allocation while managing risk. It is often possible to see the makeup of robo-advisor ready-made portfolios without actually having to invest money in them. You can simply register with many of the services online. You can get through and you can see the different types of portfolio that they suggest for different risk profiles. So that way you can get an insight into building portfolios for a given risk profile, even if you don't choose to use a robo advice service. But what about if you don't want someone to do all the work for you and you want to pick and manage your investments yourself? Now, of course, I can't give you advice on how to build a portfolio to suit you, but I can provide some guidance and useful tools. Firstly, the longer your investment time frame, so that's the time before you need to cash in your investments, the more risk you can take within your portfolio. Now, that's because if the value of your investments falls, you still have time for them to recover. It is for this reason that young people may take more risk with their pension fund, which they can't access until they retire, versus, say, a, an ISA portfolio that they plan to access much sooner. And then conversely, the shorter your investment time frame, the more risk averse you are, the more you will want to invest in low risk assets. So there's always this overarching thing of your own risk profile that overlays all of this. This all ties in quite nicely with one school of thought, which is that as you get older, you might look to reduce your exposure to stocks, which are the high risk assets that you often find in a portfolio. Now, because you won't have the luxury of time to allow your portfolio to recover, should markets collapse, you won't want to hold as many 
equities as you get towards retirement. Now, this has often been dubbed the age guide and has even had some basic maths applied to it. In simple terms, the age guide suggests that for someone with a medium attitude to risk, the investment portfolio should have an exposure to stocks that is approximately equal to the number 100 minus their age. So it follows that a 40 year old might have a 60% exposure to the stock market within their portfolio with the balance of the other 40% in lower risk assets such as bonds. This is a crude rule of thumb and in no way investment advice. However, in the notes of this episode, there is a link to an asset allocation calculator, which we created at Money to the Masses. If you enter an age into the tool, it will apply the age guide principle, assuming a medium attitude to investment risk. Now, if you input the age 50, for example, it will show an example investment portfolio with an equity exposure of approximately 50%. Now, the portfolio will have a diversified asset mix, even within the asset types. And by that, I mean, say, for example, equities, it will be broken down by the exposure geographically. So, for example, to North American equities and European equities. And the results are based upon analysis of the asset allocation of some of the most successful passive investment funds out there. Now, this is obviously not a personalized recommendation or financial advice, but it is a good demonstration of how an investment allocation may look. And you can then slide the bar on the tool up and down to see the impact of taking more or less investment risk on an asset allocation. So assuming that you are deciding to go with a loan and you invest your own money, then how do you pick the actual investments to put your money in once you know your desired asset mix? Now, in this series, I'm only dealing with the idea of funds. As explained, these are collective investments that make it easier to diversify your portfolio by not putting all your eggs into one basket. I'm not delving into direct share trading, for example, as this is high risk and not, in my view, suitable for most people. So it then becomes a case of choosing which funds to invest in. Now, in the next episode of this series, I would explain the types of funds that exist. So unit trusts, investment trusts, and ETFs, as well as terms such as passive investing and active investing. But ahead of that episode, how can you research the funds you might want to invest in? So for starters, you need to choose an investment platform through which to buy any investment. So some of the biggest and best known investment platforms in the UK are Hargreaves Lansdowne, Interactive Investor, AJ Bell and Fidelity International. So think of these like investment supermarkets where you go online and you choose a stocks and shares, ISA, a pension or a general investment account, whatever wrapper you desire. And through that, you will then invest your money. With most investment platforms, you can buy funds or you can even invest directly in shares, for example. Now, in the notes of this episode, there is a link to the Best Buy articles of investment platforms for ISAs and pensions, which link through to the reviews of all the different propositions, those ones I've mentioned, like Hargreaves, Lansdowne, like Fidelity. Now, these reviews cover everything you need to choose a platform that suits you, including investment options and costs. Now, to help you pick a selection of funds to achieve your chosen asset mix, then many investment platforms, including the ones that I've mentioned, will have research or shortlist that you can use as a starting point for your own research. Now, there are also investment research sites out there, such as Morningstar and Trustnet, which provide editorial content and tools to help you with your fund research. Also here at Money to the Masses, we have our own subscription service called 8020 Investor, where I provide investment research and educate people on building and managing their own investment portfolios. I even run an investment portfolio live on the site to show you how you might use the research. It's not advice. It provides guidance so that users can make their own investment decisions. And if you are interested and want to have a look around, then you can take out a free 30-day trial and you can find a link in the notes of this episode where you can go through and take up that offer. Now, it's important to note that whether you decide to get someone in, so that's a robo-advice service, for example, or you want to seek full financial advice or you decide to go the full DIY route and pick funds and investments yourself. It's not an either or decision. You can do both, for example, if you want to go robo advice and you want to do your own thing. So you could decide, for example, to put some of your money or most of it in a robo advice proposition. And then as you gain confidence and knowledge and experience, you might start to think about 
running some of your money yourself to pick your own investments. It's your money. You can do as you choose. The only restrictions that come are through stocks and shares ISAs in the current tax year. So you can only contribute to one product, one stocks and shares ISA in the current tax year. And so if you are contributing, you have to only contribute to one of them. But you can obviously build up pots of money over time which you can hold in different propositions also bear in mind that you should be reviewing your investments regularly or at least annually to see if they still fit your needs and rebalance your portfolio if necessary now if you use one of the online wealth managers so one of those robo services i mentioned earlier they will rebalance your portfolio for you so they will buy and sell holdings to ensure you maintain the original asset mix now they will also review the suitability of your investment allocation if they've advised you on the portfolio to choose however assuming you run your own money yourself you will need to monitor and review your portfolio yourself on an ongoing basis and don't forget that research has shown that regularly reviewing your portfolio can not only reduce a portfolio's downside risk but also boost returns the most important thing with investing is to realize that it's accessible to everyone and there's a wealth of services information as well out there that you can use to help build your wealth so if you found this episode useful Don't forget to look at all those links that I've mentioned so you can explore further. Hit that like button and also subscribe to our channel.